Move you to cuff of your chest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Zion Experience. I'm joined with my good friend Rafi Farber and our new guest to the program today, at least joining the Fabrengen of the Rebbe's wedding. Wedding, yeah, marriage. That's not why I'm here. And not just the Rebbe, Rafi, also, also, <laughs> also the Rebbe Rafi would like to right. clarify if you can well, pay, I, pay attention as I... I, I would like to clarify that, that I am not a Yechinik, I am not a Chabadnik, but I don't mind it, so I just, you know, whatever. This but, is what it is. We're, we're, we're the most liberal party in the world. We coexist and everything. Be, Katrine, we got, whatever. We got all but you know, no, Rafi, you should know that according to Chabad, you're either, you're either Chabad or Chabad-to-be. <laughs> so, yeah. No, no. no just, that's nothing. What anarch- that's what anarchists say about minarchists. Like the full blown libertarian anarchist. They say, what's the difference between a libertarian who believes in no government and a libertarian that uh, a libertarian who believes in minimal government and a libertarian that believes in no government? What's the difference? Oh, six months. <laughs> it, it's, it's out of love, you know. It's out of love. All these great. Lechaim, lechaim, lechaim. Lechaim, lechaim. May lechaim, lechaim. the union of Maoban be always very successful and pleasant. The Rebbe is the Nasi Adar, so yeah, you know, l'chan. Our dear, um, our dear friend David Sibel actually makes this liquor. Um, it's made from the residue of the um, of the wine production of the winery here in Katrin. So it's yeah, it's like uh, 100% born and bred liquor in Katrin. It's, it's in a bottle. It's the Golan Heights. Anyway, if it's made from the residue, you know what you call it? You call it, you call it Grappa Sherry Sisral. Sherry's <laughs> Yisrael. That's like going into a hot mix they call it Bishop Yisrael. You know? This was the scariest place I've ever been to. Oh, yeah? yeah the one in Mikvah, it's so scary. The one in Katrin here? No, he's like, I, what? I, I, I went take... to the Arizal's Mikvah. And oh, yeah, but that's one that. Yeah, Security yeah. told him to take his bathing suit off. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that concentrated smell of men? It's like, uh, okay, never mind. And it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. Rafi, one time, yeah, me, it's me very and cold, like yeah. the Shliach of Chicago and like another eight Bacharim were in the mikveh at the same time. And it's a tiny mikveh the size of this table. And we're all sitting there and it's boiling and it's freezing outside. It was mamish, you know. And then this uh, Litvisher guy comes in and he wants to table. Well, I think he was a chassan or something. They told him he should go table before. <laughs> And he's like, when are you guys leaving? We're like, we're not leaving. There's so much room. Come inside. <laughs> and he was like, what? He's like, how does this work? We're like, how does this work? You get in. What do you mean? Come inside. <laughs> There's a fabrenging going on. Teufel, teufel. <laughs> he didn't some... know. He thought, he thought there's going to be doors opening and doors closing. Mm-hmm. And like a, them, I mean, he like, got the wrong Like a spa, the wrong like a spa and, and a bubble bath. You know, like, we're talking about mikvahs. I want to talk about her buying also. There's, a, there's some really cool stuff going on. Mm. Right now? Mm. Right now at Harabai? Yeah, just generally, like the, the spigots are opening, the police are allowing davening up there. Not like the fairish, you know, like out there, like, you know, screaming, you know, bark but or shema or something. But they allow Jewish davening? They, they, they allow <laughs> Jews to stand <laughs> silently. They allow Jews to stand there silently and, uh, and you know, and daven, have a moment of silence. And, 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 you know, cottage very quietly, but it, it's, it's happening. Like, it's, it's, it's happening. And I want to go up there and I want to daven. <laughs> And you yeah. gotta go to the mikvah before. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. That's right. the only time I go to the mikvah when I have to. <laughs> Zetov, Zetov, Hebra. Harabites at the end of the day. Whoever's, whoever's bargaining for the Kaisel, you don't know how to make a deal. <laughs> you don't know nothing about Trump. <laughs> Who cares about the third election? Who cares about the politics? Like, davening, Jews davening on Harabai when the police aren't arresting them. It's the first time in like 1,950 years it's happening. See, I never comment it's around. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real news. Who cares about all this other politics crap? Yeah, the third election. I mean, if Moshe Feigelin is not running, Zayem Od Manyan Ladat, who's running? Who's still running? Don't don't vote. That, that's that's what I say. No let's, voting. Let's, let's get that let's get that voter turnout as low as possible. What are they going to do? Nothing, They're going to have to change the laws. Nothing that scares a, a government more than very very low voter turnout. Yeah, that's true. I think the, the last elections that let's you saw all the all out. all these politicians like going crazy, like panicking, and how does are are could they change the law? Our, our, our voters didn't show up or didn't force yeah, show up, and they they're like they can't force me to vote even if it's a law. Mm. You know where I came from, where I was born. It you have to go, and if not. Then they, they can find you. They can find you, yeah. But I, the thing, the, the last two or three, I mean, this is recorded, so I, I hope oh, there's no okay. Belgian police watching. No, 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 but the, let them come get you. <laughs> I think that the, the last two or three times that I actually had to go vote, I didn't go for particular reasons. One of them was that I slept in, and the 
It wasn't open. It was only open until two o'clock, and I worked until five or six in the morning. I went to bed, you know, at that. Uh, uh, and they actually no, they they never did anything, but they could. I mean, if you. I was. I wanted to talk. With Rafi, did you have a concept you wanted to? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so there's, there's um, <clears throat> it's very Torah that I, I I came across in my mind in the current events and also in uh, the Eben Ezra. I don't want to share, but you know, yeah. Should show the show the people, show the people, show the people the Eben Ezra. We are the yeah, people yeah. of the book. Is, uh, is it something? Here is an the book. This is, uh, is it is something funny, grammatical, or this is, is ancient? Funny. It's, uh, this is ancient, ancient, ancient. It's ancient, ancient. When was Ibn Ezra? Twelfth century of the Common Era. Ibn Ezra is very, very early, like tenth. This is century. Tenth century. We are the people of the book. And In this Spain, is the book. Huh? In Spain, Bibles and prayers, homies. What? Where was the Ibn Ezra living? Eben Ezra, he moved all over. Um, so, he was this, the wandering so, Jew. So this week, this week Paul, Vol Paul Volcker died. He was the former Fed chairman, and I talked about him on one of the podcasts. He was he was one of the least bad. He was probably the least bad Fed chairman, Federal Reserve chairman ever. And Would you like to say a toast to his memory? No, or no, no, not that no, much. Because no, no, <laughs> I saw you had a very passionate uh, no, Facebook no, I, post. I, People I, should check it out. I have a level Rafi of respect Fire, wrong for him. But I'm not going to make a toast to him. He's still the head of the Fed. Oh, okay. But uh, anyway, he he died, and he was really the do the U.S. dollar's last real defender, because in the in the in the seventies the go the the United States had just gone off the gold standard, and uh, the dollar started falling in purchasing power. You started getting these really high inflation numbers, and they they, they went up to like, and uh, the 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 previous uh, Fed chairman before Volcker, G. Miller, I think his name was. His idea was that, that prices are going up so fast that we have to print more money to keep up with the prices, which is like the exact opposite thing that you want to do to stop inflation. They would have destroyed the dollar entirely. And then Paul Volcker came in, and what he did was, was he, he pushed interest rates to astronomical heights just to save the currency, and he did it. He, he got inflation down from like 18% in 1980, and then it started falling. And he, he saved the dollar, Mamish. It would have ended up in hyperinflation and societal breakdown. Who, who knows how many people would have been killed? I don't even know. So, but if it would have been for him, then Amer America would have would have been using uh, the euro. America would have would have would, would have start using euro, which would have been even worse, right? Yeah. Um, but the point is, he he died this week, and in in our in our parsha, we have the death of Yitzchak Aminu, mm -hmm. right? He died at 180. So Midrash Shabbat brings up. And the question, why did Yitzchak, implicitly, why did Yitzchak live to 180? Why did uh, and Abraham have been lived to 175? Why, why, why did he take off those five years from Abraham? Mm -hmm. So the answer, the, the, the Mitrash answers, because Esau, you know, started uh, raping and killing people. And For fun. And, yeah, that yeah, was his... And, yeah. and, and God didn't want him <clears throat> to see that, so he, 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 let, he let him die in peace. So, you know, Paul Volcker died. And uh, I don't. Th I think we have just a few months left until this whole thing starts to rip apart. Uh, so may he uh, to know, follow Shalom. May he, he rest in peace. May he rest in peace and not see the death of the dollar that he saved. Um, and he won't have to see all the horror that unfolds. But the the other thing about that's Vayishlach, nice. Vayishlach, it, the Ebenezer just said something very interesting. That when that that when uh, when Shem took Dina and raped her. Yeah. Right? Uh, Dina is Yaakov's daughter. Um, it, You're familiar with this uh, case? Just for our, yeah, this uh, is this, this, this familiar, yeah. You might not know the story. And the whole um, revenge so, and... So okay. Shem, Shem, Shem takes Dina, Yaakov's daughter, and rapes her. And then he, he has this attitude like he's going to keep her in a hostage and say, oh, you know, we, we'd love to, I'd love to marry your daughter while he's holding her hostage. And, you know, please let me have her for a wife. So, so Shimon and Levi... You get together and they say, okay, so, so that's fine, but you have to circumcise yourself. Time to cut some you, you, have to, you have to circumcise yourself and circumcise the entire city, and then you can marry Dina. But they, they, were, they were trying to get out of it so they could take Dina and, and go. But then, mm. then when, every, when everybody like, circumcised themselves, they're like, oh, great, what do we do now? Like, I guess we'll have to kill them because we can't let her yeah, pay yeah. Shrem. Yeah. So, so interesting, he, he, Ibn Ezra, um, you know, the third he, day he, 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 he on, on the Pasuk, that says that that Shem said, oh, uh, Shem said to his people, oh, don't to try to convince them to circumcise. Oh, don't worry, we'll get their stuff, and their stuff will be ours, and our stuff will be theirs, and we'll give and we'll take. The words give and take are everywhere in this in, in that paragraph. Yep. Giving and taking and 
taking and giving. That's a Brit, right? That's a Brit. But, but That's what a Brit is about. Opening the trade. <clears throat> yeah. Sh- Sh- Shimon and Levi, they saw, they, they knew that it was really just, it, it, they just wanted their stuff, right? They just wanted to take. There was it. no, ta- there was so no really, giving. So here. what? What really is this? What do they want? They want Marxism. They want communism. They want from each according to his ability to each according to his need. They want to take the stuff of Bnei Israel. Right? So, so Evan Ezra says that's why they killed them, because they, they saw that they were a bunch of commies. <laughs> so our uh, vote were actually anti of, 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 of the Pasuk that, uh, how do we know that uh, Avram, Avram Avinu went with the Yechi Amaka? It says, Vayelech Avram, but he wouldn't go with the Yechi Amaka. Obviously, he went with the Yechi Amaka. But the correlation is not that strong, but the, but the point is clear. <laughs> Don't be a communist. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, sorry. Indeed, respect your tradition, respect your ancestors, your avot, because they were anti-communist as well. Yes, and that's we were. Chaim. Rabbi Abraham, you know, Avram Avinu, the first, the first uh, Hebrew. Avram Avram Hebrew. Avram Avinu was uh, was uh, I think he was a capitalist. I think so. Of course he was. A capitalist. Yeah, of course. He said, if you don't, I mean, thank um, God. How much possession? Pay up. Yeah. Pay up. <laughs> well, the biggest yeah. communists and the biggest libertarians in the world were all Jews. Marx and Trotsky and... What happened, I mean, you know... The Trotsky com- was Jewish? The first I, time I, communism I ever was unveiled, you had uh, Lenin saying, oh my God, Stalin is my hitman. He should never actually hold power because he's just going to keep on doing what hitmen do. Which I think uh, a similar scenario unfolded, I think, uh, in Lubavitch at the uh, whatever. I'm not going to get into it right now. But the point is, is that there are people that aren't sensitive enough to understand what leadership is, and Stalin yes. was definitely one of them. And Lenin knew that, but before he was able to do anything about it, Stalin took over, and Lenin died, and that was the end of that. And that was the first time communism was practiced. And you see that Adaye Maze. If we're talking about tradition and stuff, you see that anyone that's going to do communism is going to do it based on, you know, there's a lot of minhagim, not only in Judaism, but also in governments. Yeah. You see the, the presidents have the tradition, traditions, traditions and, and rituals. Yeah. You'll see Trump and, 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 and all these presidents going back to every one of them signs on Yudalaf Nissen, happy birthday to Rabbi Schneerson, and they sign it in to be education day according to the Jewish calendar. And, and this, but they'll do the same thing for the, for the Hindus on their holidays and their special occasion and the Chinese and you know all, anyone that they need votes for or they want to show that they're loyal to even though they might not under like uh, the, the speech that Trump said for the, for the Indians uh, festival is a festival of lights and to bring light into the world you could have taken that and copy pasted it for Hanukkah and it would be good you it's know, in the nuts, festival it's in of lights yeah, that's know. true so no, I, I work with a lot of uh, Indian Indian Sri Lankan, uh, in Sri, in the Indian Sri Lankan people, you see that there are like very very clear similarities between between the different uh, cu- cultures and traditions. It's always the the central theme of like the the the, the fight between good and evil. It comes back in every culture, in every tradition, in every in every religion. Actually, yeah, even though I don't consider our uh, our religion to be a religion, but. You you get what I'm what yeah, I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah. That's, that's actually something you discussed. Like tr- Trump made a some kind of executive order that the Jews are a nation. Like what's some kind of asinine executive order? Is that what you give me? I was like, actually telling what I am. I think I think <laughs> like, like, like it, <laughs> you give me permission uh, to be part I think of a you nation. That we're such good businessmen wow. and we take advantage of every single country in the world. So you want to like <laughs> kind of close down on the Jewish market, <laughs> the, 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 the pirates of, 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 the, of the economy today. I mean, but it's, but it, it, it is a true... Yeah, we're it's Jewish a, and we're in Katrin, if, tr- if not for but all it, that. But, it, but it's, a tr- it's a true fact that Jews, Jewish people in general are good businessmen. Yeah. Everywhere but, in the world you go, uh, Jews do good business. Uh, and that's something that, got, that Trump, Trump as a person appreciates in, in others, right? So he sees that there, there's The question a, is, what's the end point of what he was doing? Like, what's the Nakuda? What is he... He's, he's gonna... Jewish vote, that's all. Yeah, I don't think he's even gonna turn around. I mean, he wants... For what, for, I mean, yeah, the guy thinks he is... Okay, if he wants to the do most of the most, he are, thinks he's the most. Creeped out like that, like like the president of the United States is going to say, "Oh, Jews are a nation now." Like, it, it sounds, uh, wow, it no, of course, it, yeah. Why is it creepy? It's creepy because why do I need a president to tell the, me that I'm a nation? You the, can use it as some kind of precedent. Oh, why? Why you? Now. Why you even? No, why but, are you even? Why you even? Why do you even? 
Why does it even invoke a response? On the other hand, no. It's like if the Sanhedrin didn't say anything, so we're still sitting here and waiting for orders. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, no, but the, the Pope thing, could say same something. Thing like the, the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem, everyone was like going gaga over that. Well, that Who cares. Okay, well, he's, mm. an Amer- he's an American, he's an American embassy, so that's something that's connected to him. But if he says something, mm. if he starts saying that Shtaramalach are, are, are better on Yom Tov than on Shabbos, does it matter to the Jews? <laughs> no, it doesn't, because it's not his. It's not his clone. <laughs> Mendel Futterfass once said, in order to Mendel be... Mendel Futterfass? Mendel Futterfass. He's one of these big Hasidic, Hasidic uh, figures. Yeah. He yeah. said that in or, by a Fabrengen back in the day, in order to open your mouth, you had to be a Mandomer. <laughs> a Mandomer means you have to be someone that your opinion even matters to begin yeah. with. Yeah. yeah. You have to be learned in the, in the thing that you're talking about. Obviously, we're here just... We, no talk, credentials, talk, we're just doing our thing. Talking a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's bo- yeah. We're not, yeah. We're not trying any... At least I under, like, I realize that my contribution will be probably limited to bringing in some shtiot, right? Shana, and, so, and, whatever, gonna, listen, and some funny... So trying, missing, to, trying to bring some funny stuff. We're putting anyway. salt and we forgot to put pepper. You could put pepper. Yeah, okay, hey, you know, look, our discussions are much more intelligent and, and, and focused. Than, than all the political blabber that is going on in America. Exactly, time. guys. Yeah, because it's a, because it's a it's a gang it's a gang of egos fighting each other all the time, trying to be better by just disc, like discrediting the other side. And if you have to discredit the other side in order to make yourself feel better or or portray yourself that you are better and so on, what what's the Indian? What's what's the what's what's really the core of, of that being, of that thinking, of that, it's empty. It's completely empty. Yeah, we're not trying to prove anything here, Rabbi Yisai. We're just, we're just schmoozing. We're trying to figure out ourselves, like we said last week. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going for a ride. Shema, there's, there's uh, life's... Uh, I wanted to speak about something. You, Rabbi, you, you said your point basically about the Federal Reserve. So basically, uh, people, I don't know, invest in silver. Is that what's the what's the achlat to teva out of everything you say? You always say the economy is about to crash like a missile from Iran, <laughs> but I don't know what like. Uvechein uh, yishtabach. What's wait, the uvechein? You want me to give investment advice? I'm not, I'm, I don't have a license to do that. <laughs> yeah. So then you could say you don't have a license. What do you think? Alex Jones, okay. he sells yeah. he sells vitamins, <laughs> but does he have a license? <laughs> he just says that he doesn't have a license, and then he keeps talking. <laughs> no. It's like saying it's like a hesped. I'm like, I'm going to give a hesped, but I'm going to give a hesped. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? <coughs> Freedom of speech, maze. Rafi, you see the economy going to the tubes. What do you think uh, the people the people should do now? Should we take loans now because interest is very low? Well, um, if you can take a fixed rate loan that is guaranteed to stay at a certain interest rate forever and yeah. you're done paying it off, then yes. Okay, good. At which rate or under which rate? One point five. One point four. I mean, that's up to you. I mean, whatever. So now the good time to take loans. It's a good time to take fi- take fixed rate loans. Fixed rate fixed loans. Rate. Ladies and gentlemen, fixed rate loans. Get your cars, get your houses. <laughs> At fixed get rate, now. Fixed, fixed rate, rate loans. loans. Yeah, <laughs> buy your car and sell it off in 30 years. At a fixed rate loan. I, I have no, I have no license to tell anybody what to do. But I, I would say that this is friendly that, advice, that, gifts putting, and family, five family and friends, non-commercial. Yeah. Putting five to cent, five to ten percent of your assets in precious metals is probably a good idea. Precious metals, people. Swords, spears. <laughs> Just kidding. Some food, some guns, maybe. Matzah. If you, if you have a license to own a gun. If you have a few ba- uh, boxes of matzah from last year, leave it on the shelf. It yeah. might come in handy. <laughs> the but crackers, it, the lifesavers. We need Alex Jones. He but he sells you a big tub full of, full of what powder that you that you put in a microwave. And in case we go full commie, <laughs> if we go full commie, if that happens, then the the. the Jews often think that the Holocaust was the worst thing that happened to any group of people, but the Holocaust in China was much worse. It was about ten times worse. China was worse yeah, than yeah, the Holocaust. Yeah, yeah. 1958 to 1962, the, the entire country starved to death. Started. Mao turned everything into communism. Yeah. Made everyone be communist. Because nobody did anything, and everybody died. And the thing that they so don't even they don't even know how many million people yeah. they make an estimation of between 50 and 60 if you can make an estimate that's that's that yeah more yeah. jews were lost in the that's Mo- cruel more people were lost in the statistics of the chinese holocaust than were killed in the jewish holocaust Ooh, <laughs> like but between 10 to 20 million and then yeah, yeah so that's 10 million people lost you know between 15 and 60 million or whatever but, but the people that survived those years were the ones who knew how to fish with you know sticks and, and strings that they could you know put together and 
and, and pick fruit and, and, and know how to like basic survival skills. So, you know, that's also useful basic survival skills in case everything goes to hell. Yes. Like, uh, like Upchurch, he's a rapper from YouTube. He says, when the stock market crashes, I'll be somewhere up, deep up in these pines. Killing... White man? No, killing oh. shit uh, and taking what the hell is mine, basically. So he, yeah, you have to know how to hunt, basically. <laughs> um, uh, I want, okay, now I want to change to a different topic of this. Oh, you know me, I'm always about Mashiach and this and all these crazy things. I've been... Oh, I've never, I've never... Never, I've never, never, been, never, exposed I've never been exposed to that kind of behavior, actually, no. No, my, my basic concept is, you know, when me growing up, I, I saw, you know, a lot of tsaris, a lot of uh, hardships. Mm -hmm. and, in, in my personal life, Abyssal, and, and also... In the religious world, like, yeah, particularly? Yeah, I, I or? was living in 770, so I saw a lot of things that they just got stuck on a wall, basically, like, expanding 770. There, there's so much politics in, uh, surrounding 770 that that it's, it's at a stalemate, and, and, and Chabad's growing and growing and growing, and the shul stays exactly the same. If you expanded 770 30 years ago, you would be doing everyone a favor. Mm -hmm. Today, mm -hmm. there's nowhere to room. If the entire Crown Heights goes to Dav and Shabbos in 770 once, it's going to be like Yom Kippur. That's why there's so many small shuls. Everyone wants to Daven in 770, but there's no room anymore, and because the politics is paralyzing. So this yeah. is stuff that I saw. And when I saw this, it really made me upset, right? Because I tried to make, you know... Uh, I thought, you know, oh, 770, this, this is like the, 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 the pinnacle of, 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 of Yiddishkeit, you know. Like the base of Mikdash, almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I said, if, this is, if, if politics can get stuck in, 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 this, in this kind of place, then, you know. So I always try to make, you know, try to understand is there's a Kuntras base of Benesheva Bubble that ever talks about did, 770. Yeah, okay. But they didn't then... How, I, 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 never, I don't relate to buildings, actually. I don't relate to, to, to graves. You don't have that, right? But yeah, I... Yeah. I, I, I can really connect to like a like to no to building uh, no seven seventy in order to, to which is like yeah no, it's like quite contra uh, contradiction like um, anyway no, paint like the we'll, we'll, so discuss, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss the we'll, we'll, we'll discuss we'll discuss seven yeah every single day of the year besides like erev erev simchas Torah and erev Pesach maybe that's the only time they close the doors so from all day all night there's something happening in seven seventy if there's fabrengins if there's Shiorim, if there's learning, there's there's two or three yeshivas that are learning in 770 at the same time. There's the Israeli Bacharim, there's the American Bacharim, yeah. there's the Smicha program, there's this, there's that. There's always Minyanim, and it's just, it's just, you, it's almost like, it's it's like a hub, you know? It's something, it's not like one of these shuls that you see that they like have to open the door with a key and mm. once a blue moon mm. or once on every Shabbos. And, they're, and, they're, like five yeah. minutes and people and get there like, mm, there's quite a lot of dust over here. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what 770 reminds me of? 770, you see? Especially in my mind, reminds me of Elephantine. Why? What's that? What's that? El Elef elephantine. I'm not, fam I'm not, I'm not familiar Elef with the Elephantine Elef concept. Elephantine so. was like the biggest shul outside of, of Eretz Yisrael during Bayashani. And uh, they, had, they had like, you know, back and forth with the Kohen Gadol, mm -hmm. you know, what they could do, and if they could do Corbanos there, because there's so many Jews, and, and like, and they, they, they weren't, it wasn't Harabayas or anything, but like yeah. it, was, it was like this huge Jewish community in Shul, and like, and the, the I think the, the Kohen Gadol said that, that wrote back that uh, that they could do Menachos, you know, just to give them some kind of outlet. Menachos? What, they could learn Menachos? No, 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 they could do Menachos. What's that? You know, al kamincha, like uh, flower offerings. Oh, well, I see. Like he's like they could make pitas. Yeah, they, they got, they got, they got a hedge. <laughs> they can't do korbanos, but they could do menachos. Okay, menachos. Anybody yeah. want? Like that's what yeah. seven. Tell me two falafels like, in your menachos. Like, like a big hub of yes. Jews, like, but it, you know, but they're not really. But it's it's like, like yeah, it's like it's like similar, right? Because they could make menachos and like. Based on the ancient Babel, what does that mean? Menachem Mendel, menachos. No, this is what. Okay, okay. Okay. Based on the ancient Babel, the Rebbe basically said is. Um, based on the ancient Babel is Rabbi Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, right? Mm -hmm. So he uh, he. Uh, he he went from Bavel. He went from Eretz to Bavel with the Yidden. They that was like the first goals. They actually the Rebbe said in the Gemara it speaks about it. They actually carried sacks of dirt from Harabayas with them to Bavel, and they used that as the foundation for Beis Rabbeinu of Bavel in Bavel. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's uh, Machlekes in the Gemara. They speak about 
um, where is the Kedusha after it left Harabais? So it stays, yeah. one, one of them says it's in every single shul, and the other one says it's in Beis Rabbein and Shiva Babel, and the Rebbe says they're not arguing. It's just that the main Shechina is at Beis Rabbein and Shiva Babel, and every shul has a little bit of a, a little bit of Kedusha. And the Rebbe goes on and on and on and on, and he... This is proto-politics, this is insane. The Rebbe, the Rebbe goes on like an onion, opening up new and more and more and more, and then the Deeper Rebbe Deeper, and says, then he's like... That anyone Getting that through the sponsors clippers and... a shul or anybody that gives money towards to, to, to expand the shul, then it's a great thing. Da 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 da. Uh, so that's that's based on Benishu above for you, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, basically, what I'm trying to say is, throughout my life, I've always trying to see how we could bring Mashiach closer, if you mm. want to say. And learning and dominating. I know you say, oh, it's just a building. Ober, if you see Crown Heights. Now, that I didn't say. Oh, okay. I, I was just like trying to, more to. You know, I, I don't really <laughs> relate to buildings itself like, yeah, yeah I, I, no, I don't me, I, I, trust yeah. me I don't care about a building which it happens to be what happens I can I connect to the atmosphere so you can actually you don't the connect atmosphere. to the atmosphere oh, okay okay, yeah. okay I mean if all the people are dead what's good to the building yeah <laughs> no, because, no, no, 771 so I don't remember why everyone in there maybe you need the bathroom or something <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I'm not I'm just if you don't remember why <laughs> Yeah, no, right. no, I, as long as he, as long as he for, said for those who want to know where as long as he said a pasuk inside it's okay like you can good Parkway, 770 Eastern Parkway Eastern Park. you take the three train Kingston Avenue you get out it's right across the street it's like uh, literally right there are you promoting 770 during your just, podcast or we're, we're you know for all those people we spoke about that that, that one who uh, the scientist that one who uh, observe you know all the liberals that want to observe things you know cultural appropriation and all that so they can go to 770 to to experience a to Ju- experience a Jewish um, really a Jewish uh, sab- Sabbath service. Yeah, sab- uh, sabbatical service. Sabbatical service. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, not once and not twice, the Shvarta came to, came up to me and said, "Oh, you know, I want to go in. Am I allowed to go in?" And this, and I'm like, "Yeah." Smack a yarmulke on his head, bring him in. He's all like looking around. He thinks he's gonna get shot or something. He's like, "Oh, you know, I really want to learn. I really want to this." Like, yeah, sure, whatever. Speak to him about Sheva Mitzvahs Ben Enoch a little bit here, there. Interesting. I had, I had a thought about cultural appropriation. This whole concept of cultural appropriation. Yeah. Appropriation means taking. Yeah, I assume they mean taking by force. You know, like, uh, like um, no, Tzadikim uh, Rishon, right? Uposhim Yikashlu. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Cultural appropriation. Cultural appropriation, right? But cultural, it's not appropriation. You're not stealing somebody's culture. Nobody owns a culture. A culture is the way you behave, and people can, can mimic how other people behave, and nobody owns behavior. You can, you, can, you can share, and you can create new things, new mixes. That's how culture evolves and, and develops. You know, people share ideas. People share recipes. People share the ways of behavior, ways of dressing. Yes. That's 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 a normal human thing. That's nice sharing. It's it's you know flattery even sometimes. And it doesn't have to be, but it could. Yeah, be. I I find but, that but like, in the modern era, we're we're reteaching basic principles all day and all night to all the ignorant people that don't understand <laughs> basic <laughs> policies. So. You know. so, so, so and like rules, these, these right? That's stealing. Rules, no, that's they're, sharing. They're, no, that's stealing. <laughs> yeah, sharing. Exactly. Stop stealing. <laughs> Start sharing. They, they keep no, that's not yours. From each other, it's like my kids. Advocating all this theft, yeah. but then they say, "Oh, you're not allowed to share because that's cultural appropriation." But cultural appropriation is a good thing. It's not appropriation. It's sharing, and and stealing and taxing and regulating and telling people how to use their money. That's stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies right? and gentlemen, basic. Basic so stuff. back to, the, to kindergarten. Yes, yes. So you know, it's important. I mean, I I've seen a full series uh, of, of videos on you know on, on the internet or whatever um, that they just take one concept and they just throughout the series they're basically breaking down the concept and explaining the deep the finer details of it. Yes. Stuff that was stuff that every Jewish kid should be learning in his school. I don't know what happens in public school. I don't know. And I think that a lot of people get good, bad, all that was. All those concepts mixed up a little bit in the in the public school system. They don't doesn't give them yeah, you have, compass. You have different shades of good and different shades of bad. And no, there's this is good and this is bad. Yeah, but I think that the the lines are much more uh, clear in uh, at least in the Jewish community. It's it's very like yeah, indeed true because yeah, we we have a. A guideline which says this is good and this is not good. Right. Doesn't mean that the person who's doing something which is not good is not a good person. Right. But we have clear guidelines. Yeah. Well, say so. The next, <coughs> the next step that I, what I really wanted to talk about is what I told Rafi earlier today that I'm going to mention here. So here we go. Um, 
if somebody realizes that he's been a slave and now his big like he's been a Eved in Mitzrayim for mm-hmm. the sake of the like we said what did you say the Yitzias Mitzrayim is the pan what did you say the, the pan, pinnacle, pinnacle of the human, pinnacle of human history. history not pinnacle you said a different fancy word the, the pen pen, and, pen ultimate pen ultimate pen ultimate pen Rafi pen hold on a second what's pen, pen ultimate I'm an only I think I never heard the word before in my life pen, <laughs> pen ultimate I guess it's like pinnacle it's like uh, oh Pen, I think, like what? Pen, ultimate? Uh, yeah. or no, nothing no, to do with one, a pen. It's one, it's one word, penultimate. Penultimate. Okay. It's probably a, it sounds Spanish. It's probably a, a simple pen word. Pen ultimate. 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 Pen the highest point. The highest the peak. The high, or maybe not the highest point, but maybe like the most important or a, a start off. The priority. Like the, Something very, very major. Milestone. A milestone in... in, in pen, pen, pen. Pen. Okay, good. So, yeah, it's Yasmin time. So, let's take the slave, because Judaism and the Bible brings the whole concept of freedom uh, into the picture and uh, uh, introdu- introduces uh, introduces the concept of freedom to the world. Yes. And uh, there's actually, there was actually a video that said that there were, they, they were black slaves and they used to take out the parts of Yasmin time from the Bibles that they gave them. They didn't want them to get any funny ideas, you know. But that's pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> Right, so they took out probably, uh, I don't know. Or at least called. the Old Testament. Uh, they took out the, the maybe uh, Shmois, probably. Barish yeah. Shmois, I think. Yeah. The second, the second by, what is it? So Genesis? Yosef, so Yosef, Deuteronomy? No. So Yosef was buried in Mitzrayim and then uh, they go to killing animals. <laughs> yeah, like right away. Well, Shmois is names, but it's, like, it's a. Genesis is Barish. Exodus, Exodus. Exodus. So they took, they probably Ec- took out Exodus ec- or certain Ecclesiastes. Or? Exodus, Exodus. Ecclesiastics is Tanakh already. That's. Uh, <laughs> no. yeah. Uh, what's Ecclesiastics? Uh, Ecclesiastics is Kohelet. Kohelet. Kohelet, yeah. Okay, so... So if you decide, okay, I'm in a situation that I'm a slave, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try with all my might and all my heart and all my soul to become a free man, mm-hmm. to become a Baal Bechira, to embrace my free choice and to decide what I want to do. If you keep that up, Mm-hmm. You become a slave to being to, free. To, free <laughs> yeah, to your free choice, that's a yeah, true. You become yeah. a slave to your freedom. <laughs> and if you have enough slaves fighting against you, you might find it to be very tiring in an uphill battle. <laughs> well, I, I can relate to that. Because, yeah. um, ever since I became... Rafi's been fighting for freedom all his ever life. Ever since I became a libertarian in 2012... It's an interesting story it's, how that happened to me. You wrote it down in your diary? Like, I became a libertarian well, at this I, date? I, I or remember. I remember, remember, okay. I remember that. And I remember what happened and why. That's the day you met Moshe Feiglin or? No. Close no, after. Moshe Feiglin was on the road to it. I did not become a full libertarian until I discovered Ron Paul through a weird uh, Googling. Um, oh, I thought you were going to say you met him, Ron. No, no, I did not meet him. Who is Ron? You became a libertarian off the internet? Who is Ron Paul? Who would? Ron, 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 Paul, Ron Paul is like the Moshe Feiglin of Israel, except he's much more consistent and... Uh, Different personality, but he's like he's like he's like Yitro. He's like a one of the wise men of the Goyim, who you can really respect and and take his advice and, and know that he's saying what. I he don't understand why he's not running for president. Um, he's he's eighty. He's, he's eighty four. He's fine, but um, whatever. Ever since he tried I, already. Ever since yeah. I became a libertarian, I've become obsessed with uh, with gaining my freedom from government, and that's pretty much all I think about, and and uh, and and ways to further the movement, but like. It becomes it becomes taxing. It becomes tiring, and, and so you see it as a um, set. Yeah, I'm 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 a slave to it, but but everyone's a so you're slave. a libertarian I'm activist. Li- libertarian activist. I try right? to be a libertarian activist, but I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> now because po- most people don't get it. I, I, that's what I've I feel when I was like, I think I was 14, 15, 14, 15 years old. I was really like into this. Maybe because I was young, I was like a, in puberty. I was r- really. I had this very, very strong interest in anarchism, and like, mm-hmm. how could, we, how can we live as, as, uh, like, what's the ideal uh, society? And in, in a way, the anarchist society is the ideal society. It's just that majority of people, um, at least where I grew up, are not fit for this model. Because you have to be a very, very disciplined. You have to have very strong self-discipline. Um, and most people actually don't have that, and they don't have that sense of responsibility without a sword hanging, like a what's it called, like a like an axe, uh, yeah, an axe well, over, axe, no, axe no, over there for that fear, yeah, like <coughs> pushed fear of heaven. Okay. 
I, I, I heard I heard an interesting saying this week that um, the, how, how, the business cycle how does it unfold not, not in terms of economics and the monetary and, the, and stuff but, but like what do you see you start with you start with um, good good people right mm-hmm. good people hard working people breed good times yes good times breed lazy people lazy <laughs> people breed bad times bad times breed good people and good people breed good times again and the cycle repeats so you say so my kids are going to be this, spoiled brat. This, this this whole idea of personal responsibility and and people working hard and having a code and ethics and yeah. that that that's not going to be this generation. I mean the, the the entire facade of 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 wealth and debt and that's based on is going to have to be wiped out before people can become strong again. And then you'll start then then when when you, when you have an anarchist society or a private property society, you don't need a majority of people to have a code. You need you need a certain a, a small minority to have a code, and and uh, from from there, you know, the, That's why the I think criminals indeed. can be kept under control with a private police force, private insurance. That, private yeah, force. I always the, the, for me the ideal. I I always thought throughout the years I became more realistic in this sense, and then I was like, I think anarchism is is workable in very small communities Most where you have like a lot of like if you put 500 an- like very dedicated anarchists together they will get along because they're all like this is their well, ideal let's, and let's, they... defi- let's define anarchism for a second it's not but like anarchy, anyone can do with anarchy in the simple world that's true isn't that that's, like a, that's a, indeed true a phase usually between governments or between yeah well the, the the relationship between china between the government of china and the government of the united states for example is anarchist because the relationship no, because the you, relationship between those governments is anarchy because there is no there is power no, on top of both of them that can control what each yeah. of them do. That's where the Sanhedrin comes in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're the brokers. <laughs> we just need a license. <laughs> by by anarchy we don't I don't mean that, that everyone can do what they want and there is no law. Hmm. Like for example in a Jewish state, anarchy would be Torah. And and not 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 that, you know, if you break Shabbos you're gonna get killed. But but I'm talking about like like Torah like what do you do if somebody steals something? Touch you make hayfell. You pay you pay twice the penalty. penalty. Yeah. Okay. Those kinds of tort laws like a private property society, an anarchist society has to decide how do you punish someone who steals your sheep? He he pays two sheep back or four or whatever it is. That that's what I mean. Like we have a law code that we can enforce with private courts. That, that when somebody steals something, what do you do? When somebody aggresses against somebody's property, what do you do? When somebody makes a board with Shusha Rabbi, what do you do? Who's responsible? Hmm. Those are the kinds of questions that Torah can answer, not in terms of religious law, but in terms of tort, secular tort law. That people, that women can say, oh, you know what, that's reasonable. All right. The, 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 that's the kind of law, halacha, that I want to see operating on everybody, on chilonim, on charedim. Everyone can agree. And, and we can go to a court, and a religious rabbinical court, and say, okay, so this guy dug a hole in my property. Who's responsible? How much does he pay? And the Torah and, you know, and judges decide based on halacha. I'm not a very big expert on what the Sanhedrin, like, basically, because I, I, like, I was thinking, you know, um, let's say the Democrats and the Republicans want to go to the Sanhedrin mm-hmm. and, uh, and put forth... Bring their case, like the impeachment, case the impeachment, impeachment of Donald Trump, Trump right? Yeah. They that's bring... Stupid. Yeah, I know it's stupid. They but have it's two witnesses that's bothering them, and that's you know people have they, petty they, arguments, and they want to solve. Do they really? I, I haven't I followed. I think they're voting on it today or tomorrow. I, have, I haven't. It's fo- BS. I, they keep I haven't, on redoing. Re- basically I haven't followed that whole circus from a distance a little bit. I, do, I really don't even know what's. Okay, uh, there's something with something with Ukraine and something. There's no way in the world that they're going to be able to impeach him, but they know that they have the right to keep on trying. So they're just wasting time. Oh, I hope keeping to try. But they don't have anything. They don't have enough to yeah, be impeached. But, but, but don't you know what happens if they impeach him? If they impeach him, then the trial goes to the Senate, and the Republicans control the Senate, so they can bring in any witnesses they want and bring in Hunter Biden. Yeah, that's exactly Biden what people are saying. saying. Hunter, people are saying that all that, that, that it's a trap that Trump is happy to take the Democrats for a little while. Sure. He's going to be able me. to s- force them to all swear on their oath and lie and this and cheat <laughs> and just dump all the, the, the entire deep state into jail. And one big whoop swoop. Well, basically, Trump is disgusting. The Democrats are disgusting. Let them duke it out in the Senate and destroy each other. Well, Rafi is wishing both of them the best hell. of luck. Yeah. <laughs> he wants both sides to go to yeah. hell. There, there's a point. <laughs> hey, you want both your houses? There, there, there's a point where yeah, there's definitely. So let, let's go back to the Sanhedrin concept. Yeah. So I was thinking like, let's say the Democrats are like. Should we do the Sanhedrin thing? Because they're like a broker team. They're like an international brokerage team, let's say, right? Who names them? 
Yeah, but let, let's say uh, Adin Steinzaltz and a few uh, a few rabbis get together and the, and the state finally puts a law out. That's and, what they are. They sponsor the whole operation no, and they no, have their no, own. No, I don't want them to sponsor is, the thing. Is, okay, fine. Isn't that what we're talking about? Donations. It, Rafi's going to be in charge is, of fundraising the whole thing. $50 million a month. It's all on Rafi. He but is, isn't that what Raf Steinzaltz is already trying to do? Yeah, to bring Steinzaltz in, uh, has been, uh, he's been involved in this. So, so back to the point. The Democrats, I was thinking in the beginning, like they could read all the Jewish law and come to their own conclusion, let's say, is, according to Jewish law, if we, basically, if we use this channel, it's almost like in Quran Heights, if you don't like what one Rav says, you go to the next Rav, <laughs> this is the other thing. <laughs> you so can't, like, yeah, but you can't do that. But yeah, here in the Sanhedrin, you can't really do that, because at the end of the day, I think, the Sanhedrin are the ones who decide... Basically, where which which parts of the Jewish law to stress Indeed. It's in a, order to bring out the verdict? It's A or B, and they will say A and B. Like, um, if, if they say B, we follow kind of B. Independence that the, that the judges have. I think it's also in America and in, in Israel that they the high kind of like yeah. at the end of the day, the judges basically decide according to their uh, intuition. I guess it's the high court, right? The high court, the court yeah, yeah it could no, possibly. Uh, but I'm saying so. At the end of the day, it's not really possible to predict. Um, the outcome of what the Sanhedrin would say, and you'd be basically be relying on God-fearing Jews, which being a God-fearing Jew is not something that you can, it's not something that you can uh, put on a paper. You can't, you can't calculate it. It's like um, what they were saying about what why Kim Jong Un was so scared of Trump is because Kim Jong Un was able to take every other president for a ride. The only reason why he wasn't able to put his finger on Trump because, is because he's unpredictable. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's, yes, like, yes. he's like, yeah, you think you're going to nuke me? I'll nuke you. My button works, you know? And, and, and Kim Jong-un's like, wait a second. Is he going to nuke me? <laughs> <You know? laughs> so he's unpredictable. And that is that, what that, broke him. That's yeah, what that broke that, the that, yeah, you know? yeah, that broke the ice as well. That's what triggered, like... Yeah, uh, Kim's like, okay, that's it. I met my match. Now I respect this person. He's unpredictable. Break the ice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So laws are very dry, you know, and I, when I was learning Gemara in Yeshiva, I was like, so if the guy says this, if he denies, mm. if he this, so then you let him go? You don't make him swear, whatever? But what if, what if the Ganev learns this halacha? Then he's going to be able to know how to swim out of the judgment. That's amigo. Yeah, yeah. so, so, so the, 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 the answer is that the Chachamim basically said, yeah, we're going to put all the laws out there, mm -hmm. and... Uh, we're basically taking the risk <laughs> that whoever knows the law kind of gets away with it because that's what I think that's what it sounds like. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously. And uh, the, 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 I was talking to a friend of mine from the states, and he said that the, the the way I explained him, like he asked me, like in the Sanhedrin, are they going around with envelopes picking up evidence? Are they going into crime scenes and like collecting? And I said, I think that uh, like the biggest card, the biggest ace that the Sanhedrin have, is the Adam Zimmerman mm -hmm. concept. Where they take a couple people, they interview them separately, and they try to correlate the stories. Is that cross, it's cross-checking. Cross-checking. Yeah. That's like if you want to take one department in the American, in the United States, uh, it's, that's the CIA. Mm -hmm. They rely on human intelligence yes. more than, uh, than, let's say, physical stuff. <laughs> like if they want to know what's happening in a place, they send a few people there to mingle with the crowds. Hey, Ahmed, what's going on? <laughs> When's the next kaboom? <laughs> you know, so so that's like the CIA is like that kind of thing, and they they rely on human intelligence more than like you know picking up hairs and counting DNAs and shit. You, know? <laughs> you know, so that that was interesting. You know, like shma, like the whole. I, I remember when as a kid, we used to play Adam Zimmerman all the time. You know, you have to bust your friend. It's a yeah, we used to play it as a game. We Adam Zimmerman. Adam, Adam Zimmerman was a game. We had two kids would go into a. If any, if anyone is um, is guessing yet, it's the middle of winter over here. Winter, it's we, cold. We dropped under 20 degrees Celsius. For those who, of you who understand what that means, 20 degrees Celsius. The thing is, like, I was. I'm from New uh, York. I don't know I, what that means. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> He's vaccinated. That's why he's yeah. safe. Ladies I was, and gentlemen, check it out. <laughs> I was telling some people in Belgium that that this week, indeed, the I got to I. I, I thought it was cold this week. In the middle of the war, they didn't yep. have time to vaccinate. They were trying to put him in a toaster. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, Adam Zerman has kids. The two kids would go and make up a story, and then they would come and tell it to the Basin, right? And then the Basin would interrogate <laughs> both of them and try to bust them, <laughs> making up shit. So they would say, and what was he wearing? Sunglasses. And what color were the sunglasses rims? 
And if the kid said, I don't know, so then you, can, you, st- you still can't bust him. But if he says, if they didn't think about it earlier, like, what color was the sunglasses rim? Like, I don't know, yellow? Uh, like, uh, okay, we'll say yellow. So if they do that, but if not, if he thinks that he's trying to be tough, and he's like, they were red, and then the other one says they were blue. Like, ah, you can bust it, you know, <laughs> then you do a round two, you know. So that's how we used to play as kids. It was a good game. So, uh, yeah, you know, Jewish kids. Jewish, Jewish, yeah, Jewish kids smart jokes. Smart Jews. <laughs> I remember, I remember even when we played it, it was, it was a kid's bar mitzvah, we were, they rented out a hotel, they drove yeah. us to Queens from New York, yeah. from uh, New York City, we, we drove to Queens, we stayed at a hotel, and there was a whole, you know, we had those, all these meals and Shabbos and that, they were running around in the lobbies, we were playing Adam Zemim, Khabib, what did you get? <laughs> Stroke our tie, what are we going to do? <laughs> Whatever, I didn't mean it like that, but, <laughs> you know, so uh, we were playing Adam Zemim, yeah, I mean, uh, you know. I mean, I think, I think that most Jews, like, the last time Sanhedrin was established, it's like we were, we're thinking of, like, people with turbans and, you know, towel robes or something. <laughs> we have to think of, like, a more modern, classier Sanhedrin with, like, uh, ties and hats. And you, you saw the, like, the pictures of Nadler, like, this short guy with his pants up to here, the... the, the I, I've heard his name around the picture here, I don't know who he is. Uh, is he a Jew, although? He's probably Jewish, yeah. He's very New York, that I can... <laughs> Like, but he has, he, he's like very, very short, but his pants are higher than the taller people because he puts his pants like here. Like it's a, under his, under his axles? Uh, according to Kabbalah, it makes sense because the, 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 the lower... According uh, to Kabbalah. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because that guy is deep in politics, which means deep into mm-hmm. government, and government is Malchus. And Malchus is the lower element, so him picking up his hands... But like hand, the lower, lower elements, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Central, you know. Yeah. Central lower area. Yeah, the, the Malchus, I mean, it could be... The it's like lower feet. state New York? Like, uh, the, the, I don't know. Uh, you have Chochmah, you have the head, right? Yeah, Chochmah being a it does. Then you have Chesed Gevorah Tifres, the Midas already going down, and then the... The, the, uh, the, the yeah. The, the, the middle the basis, leg is the basis, Malchus, basically. Basis. The basis. That's the truth. And uh, it's what makes it happen. It's the lowest place, but it's also the highest place because it, it connects to Atmos, it connects to the kingdom of Hashem, blah, blah, blah. It's a loop. But the point is that, you know, if he's in government all day, it's, it's subconsciously, I mean, you know, it makes sense, whatever. I don't know how to explain it. No, that, just, that just raised a thought, hmm? a weird thought. Like you were talking about his pants, right? You know, there's one law that if it passed, it would, it would be the end of all government very quickly. Ooh. Which law? <clears throat> that nobody... In government, is allowed to wear any clothes. Like Why Adam and Eve. The law, Rafi. You'd be the only one. In like like Adam, Adam, Adam and Eve in the in in Congress, they have they gotta be naked. You know, then you know they, nobody would want to. Would, you would want that to be an Eve no, or a Mishpachim. No, then then we we're gonna have is like there a any reasons there, for that. There, there are, Why would you want? But there are people who really like this, so you're gonna have like nudists. <laughs> all over the ruling so all different Buddhist governments. Government, like, what do they care? They don't care about regulations. They just want to be naked. Rafi, what, why? Why would you? Why would you send? I mean, there's <laughs> enough garbage on the internet. Why would you want it to be on C-SPAN? I mean, uh, I don't know. I wouldn't. Uh, it's amazing. They should. They should make a law that you have to wear colorful rainbow streimlach. That would be cute. You know? At least you could see them for the clowns they are. All the politicians. <laughs> You see Trump with a big rainbow strimal. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I don't have to worry about my hair anymore. There's this new law. I've got to wear the strimal. Forget it. No, Save me a lot of money. Did you Did you hear about I call my strimal once a week. My hair, I had to get it done every day. All well, the cotton candy would fall out. And my dog, he would be eating it. <laughs> did you hear about those uh, those those new uh, revelations about the interviews with um, these high ups in the the American army on the truth about Afghanistan? So there was the, this this one law, this, free, this co- the law called the Freedom of Information Act. I think it's the best law that's ever been passed by Congress. The, any of the Freedom of Act is probably a good thing. The Freedom of Information Act. They were able to publish all these 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 interviews with like people high up in the American army yeah, yeah. about how all of Afghanistan was a lie. Chaim. That 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 America was never winning the war. That they had no idea what they were doing there. Nobody knew where the bad guys were, where the good guys were supposed to be, and people just died for nothing. And there was just random bombings of nothing for no reason. And, and, and like it's like like you know when we hear stories about the, like this, is that also the six day the, war for yeah. example cocaine is that what it is the Afghanistan or the no, oil? heroin no, heroin uh, heroin and hashish heroin and heroin yeah they they yeah, get all the heroin yeah, from there the hashish 
So like, like we we're gonna meet our we're gonna meet our good friend uh, Moish, and um, now he's a he's a he's a veteran. He's a vet, he, he was in Afghanistan for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he has he has like stories about it, but yeah, he, he got injured and so on. Anyway, but uh, yeah, he was also he told us a few uh, stories about it that he like. Yeah, yeah so the, yeah. The, basically the, the whole thing was a lie, and a trillion dollars yeah. were wasted on nothing. It was the same as Vietnam, which was all a lie too. Mm -hmm. And and like when when we when when we read about the Six Day War, for example, and then we talk, we uh, like read books about like Six Days of War by Michael Oram was a good book about it, but talks about all the, the blatant lies that were told by the Arab media to the Arab people, like how they were winning the war and they were bombing Israel and they were going to win. Yeah. All the, uh, like, but really, that's why they had, they had, to, had to leave for a few days and come back. and. The same thing. The same thing. They lied to their people about how they're winning the war when they're not. It's just a propaganda machine. That's all it is. Hmm. Of course, we spoke about this last Just time. your two cents, right? Yeah. <laughs> we spoke about this last time, that, 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 that Julian Assange said that the, the media uh, are responsible for the last 50 years of war, and if they would do their due diligence or expose everything that, to the public, then nobody would go to war, including 9-11, which is the cause for a big war. What people don't understand sometimes is they're looking for the, like, they're trying to pin their finger on what the point of the war is. So you're saying, oh, so it wasn't about killing terrorists, so what was it about? Was the oil? Was it about the cocaine? But then when you realize that even mm -hmm. if no oil, no cocaine, nothing, they went into a country and they left, like in Vietnam, let's say. So you, so you say, oh, at least they signed some papers and made some uh, freedom. No, there's something else going on. Because the, the shady characters in government, what they gain out of it is, let's say, the, the lobbyists for the weapons manufacturers, right? Yes. So like we say in, in Judaism, schar mitzvah, mitzvah, schar avera, avera. Fair. The actual deed of going and killing and shooting and dying and spill, spilling blood. Asaf, right. So that itself, the actual wasting of bullets, the way, the actual using of weapons, that itself is the point. Yeah. The Itahara doesn't have another string. It's not, it's not an apple connected to a, to a rod. That you don't don't need, need uh, look no further you know need, need mm -hmm. not look further. <laughs> yes. This is the, the actual now if the, if they yes. get some drugs or if they get some. Uh, uh, also, but they're getting bonus. It's bonus. The bonus. Yeah, but they're getting there's some people getting very rich of this war economy like this 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 like exactly. it's like it's like huge part of the economy. There's actually if you talk no, no, about it's not, it's not a part of the economy. It's a huge drain on the economy that some people siphon off. Like, that is also true. But if you look at the economy as a whole, then the the the, no, no, web, the weapon industry. An important point. War is not part of the economy. It's part of the thing that destroys the economy and sucks off wealth, wealth and resources. Yeah, there was it's that a, post. It's, it's if a, a government. It, it, it depends on what the what the war is about, right? If right, you if, if you go if to it, what war the, what, is, is cutting well, I mean, off. I mean, I Trump in itself is is very clear about it. When he was like, he, he was tell, he was explaining why they left Syria, and he was like, yeah, but I, the advice I gave them is like, if you go in, at least. Take the oil, and that's what we did. He was very honest about it. Why? Why did? Why did he keep 500, uh, 500 of his soldiers there to protect the oil? He is very transparent and clear about what the reasons is. I mean, if you, if you, in, he sees it as an investment. You invest in a war in order to in, have some return on your investment, and that's what I mean. He's a, he's a I, business. I, I, don't, I don't think that he's a business. Of course, he's a business guy. I mean, he, he looks at the at, at the state as and the government, the state led by the government as a business. And he just looks at okay, um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna invest. I'm gonna miss five. Government can't be business. Even if you look at, you can't look uh, at that way. And but he had, but he has, he has enough friends. He, not, he, I mean, the truth he was a businessman. He has enough honest, friends to, like that are in business. Would, would would do less warfare than him, and he didn't start this. He's like, okay, we're already there. What's ours? What's not? If that's supposed to be ours, so then let's take. No, it. he looks to, he, to me. He looks he looks like the kind of person who is very very um, also, by the way, Robert, target and goal oriented. He's a very goal oriented person. And he's like, this. I, in the next four years, I want to do this, 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 and this. Just like a CEO is doing that. Like, he's like laying out, laying out. This, he was a CEO. They lay out a strategy for four, Robert, five, or ten years, and Italy, that's what he has been doing for. Fields, yeah. Right. And he. Yeah. he so we already had that. So if the um, United States of America has some army bases next to some oil fields, even though, like we said earlier. They're sharing and they're stealing, <laughs> but, but why do you need army bases next to oil fields? We have so much shale oil in America that they're going bankrupt because the price of oil is too friggin' low. 
Uh, <coughs> talk about it. Like, like, how much money did they spend in Afghanistan and Iraq and Syria? It's even... Truly, it's, is a trillion dollar but, investment but it's a few oil wells? Well, sure. It's, it's, it's even cheaper to outsource all of that crap, right? But it's Instead not cheaper. of America's twenty three trillion dollars in debt and it's getting worse. What are you talking about saving money? It's just saving money. It's all fantasy. Ladies and gentlemen, solving the world's problems once again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, I remember my, we had used to have long fabrengas into the night, the bar, and then for a while, whatever, you know, teenagers, you know, just sitting around, just brainstorming, and that, then you realize, like, nobody's listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we're recording Indeed. a little bit of it. Indeed. Maybe some, some smart people. And actually, also, ideas. we have a far brain to go to as well. Definitely. All right, we'll wrap this up, Larry. Uh, Rabbi Avram, what's your closing statements for today? What do you think uh, we, could, we could leave the people with? Um, what we could leave the people with is that. Probably Rafi will agree with me on this point, and you as well. Politics is just really, really funny. Or is this like, I, I've, I, I, I've always taken an interest in politics, and the way I'm looking at politics over here right now in Israel, I'm like, what a joke! It's <laughs> really, really, it's just, it, it, it's so terrible that it becomes funny. It's, it's just the gloves like, <laughs> are off at this point, and it's yeah, legamri. Rafi, what, what's your closing statement? Don't vote. Don't vote, ladies and gentlemen. Anarchy starts here. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. You and if know? you're gonna if you're gonna vote, at least drink half a bottle of David Sibel's, our our dear friend David Sibel's, very very good and very delicious you crappa. Know, support the cause, ladies and gentlemen. If, if there was like links a coordinated in, effort to like to like destroy polling stations by like going into vote and then like taking all of the stuff and just like no, burn all the burn burn all, burn all the papers all at the same time at the yeah. same time of day. We would just, just burn like, all the. <laughs> And like, and they can't do anything because there's no more robot. Like, there's no indeed. Like, if 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 you need to burn lighter fluid into the box and then throw a match in. You know, for legal reasons, I'm not encouraging this. I'm not saying you should do it. I'm just saying it would be funny. Yeah. Okay. It would be. I'm not encouraging the crime. That would be even funnier than politics in itself as a whole. The concept of politics, especially here in Israel, it's yeah. Who counts the votes? But in, in, in the in the mid '90s, right before before Fagelin became this big thing, he he Zuartin became a big thing. The first thing he wanted to do was Mivtsa Machpil. The idea was if if they built an outpost. Okay. One second. Okay. Are we Two back? Minutes. Two minutes. No, one minute. Okay, so as we were saying, so if the Arabs it's, get a majority, worst case scenario, we'll give them a chance. I mean, they, they, I mean they're great. I mean, in Morocco, they took my great grandfather and they put him in a cannon and they <laughs> busted him into a thousand pieces. Yeah. What could go wrong, Rafi? If Rafi? the Arabs have a majority, they'll say they, the Jews have to get out and give our country back. And we'll say, forget you. We have all the weapons. Yeah. We care about what and we'll say, you know what? Keep that Knesset. We'll build another uh, Knesset over here. And then we just rule. They'll be like, you know what? I right, think Yossi we'll just... <laughs> was saying something about a Sanhedrin. Can, can we get him in here, please? Yeah. We need a change. A few laws. Okay. Okay. In the freeze, yeah. All anyway, right, people, ladies people and gentlemen, are... my, my closing statement is um, it's better to be a slave to redemption than to be a slave. <laughs> <laughs> it's better to be a slave to redemption, at least hopefully one day. You know, we'll keep working at it. We will get there. And of course, us three are just, you know, there's many, many thousands, of hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of Jews trying to bring Mashiach. For some people, Mashiach means oh, mortgage and a car. Some people, it's. For me and, and, and for the people of the book, it's the Sanhedrin, it's Minui Melech, it's all the real stuff in the, in the legitness. It's, the, it's about the barbecue on no, Arabais. It's, it's about the barbecue, it's about the, the 11, 11 spices on the high, you know. Make no doubt about it. We can get a lot yeah. of people, a lot of hipsters, a lot of, a yeah. lot of junkies on board because there's, there's, there's a lot of there's gonna be to go a, around. Oh, the, oh, yeah, yeah. The Mizbeah Hakteris, ladies and gentlemen, that's the spicy place to be. I mean, yeah. you think the Holy of Holies. The high priest was hot boxing in the Holy of Holies, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. There was there was a Make reason. No mistake. There was a there's a reason why he's called the high priest on the high holy and the, the high, uh, in the high holidays the holy and so on. At least, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, there's a place in the base of English for you. Whether you like steaks <laughs> or getting high, or whether you like good music, we're gonna have the Levine. Oh wow, all, that's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's, gonna, that's gonna be a serious party. Have to have a place it's for all kinds of Jews in order for it to be nice. Listen, we might even have a DJ there. That's, yeah, gentlemen. that's gonna be a serious party. Big um, 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 hot tubs. Um, Heated flooring, ladies and gentlemen. It's like a rap song, We're right? We're you know, like, yeah, yeah, we can have we can even have music videos made on the Ezra Snushim, you know, like with a zoom, with a boom, and everything. <laughs> you know, it's, it's got like a nice angle. The guy's like sitting there on the. You know, you, you, you remember Dr. Dre? 
you know yeah, yeah with the yeah, headphones and everything yeah like his video clips they're like they they represent what could go on you know hot tubs like mcfizz like a lot of yeah, champagne barbecue yes, barbe barbe barbecues between men and women and you know <laughs> hot, <laughs> hot tubs barbecues ladies and gentlemen let's make this hot go tubs, barbecues and raves <laughs> exactly the music yeah have, that's uh, what it's about sheer sh sheer sh 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 it's not like once in a while but, every day but there's the only thing is that concert, the, the, the barbecue but the, the, like the biggest difference between one of dr D dr Dre's video clips and what's really going to happen in, in a, when the base makers is rebuilt is that in this in the base everybody's going to be smiling and in, in Dr. Dre's video clips everybody's like looking angry we're going to have the insight we're going to have God himself this is going to be the you're going you're not going to regret the trip to the Harabais and the trip that you're going to have in the Harabais yeah, yeah here's, here's, it's going to be a serious trip final it's going to be a serious trip even more serious than DMT 100% who or what is stopping the rebuilding of the base in Mikdash right now? Medinas Israel. Medinat Israel. So let's give it to the Arabs. Yeah. I want to import like to the to the Arab ninjas and five thousand samurais. Lachaim nice to the Arabs. Lachaim to the Arab Rav. May they do tshuva. A A S A P. Lachaim to the Arab Rav. May they return to their roots. And when we say roots, we mean to the part when they were actually normal, not the part of Mitzrayim before they. <laughs> Basically, you know what I mean. You know when they. <laughs> You should listen to Yisroy. Yeah. 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 Alright. That's a wrap. Oh, the, the audio better be good.